morning everyone, welcome to church. I remember when we were told we couldn't go to see our mothers on Mother's Day, how traumatic that was for many of us. And none of us, I don't think, would have expected that come Father's Day, we were in a similar scenario. This year just has not been as we would expect it to be. Today, as we start our service, I'm going to play a little video which hopefully will make you laugh a little bit and then we'll have our music but before we do have that video let me pray heavenly father today we give you thanks that we can join together in prayer in song in hearing your word we pray that you will bless fathers and that we will be continually pointed to you as the good Father in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Build-A-Dad, and he's pretty great. Build-A-Dad is available in many shapes, sizes, and qualities, and includes a variety pack of accessories. You can build a business dad, or a funny dad, a handy dad, or a where do you think you're going dad. You can build a disappointed dad, or a sad dad, a friendly dad, or a don't make me pull this car over dad. Build a superhero dad. Or a brainy dad, a proud dad, or a teaching my kid to drive dad. Build a short dad, or a tall dad, a hairy dad, or a going bald dad. Build a tea party dad or a princess ballerina dad, a my daughter's first date dad, or a time for a lecture dad. Act now and we'll send you the attachable kung fu denture grip. <laughs> now, wait a minute, that's not how it really works. Although the kung fu denture grip would be kind of cool. Father's Day is a day to thank God for the unique one of a kind dad he created just for us. Happy Father's Day, dad. Build a Dad includes two bottles of non-toxic hair tonic for hair follicle encouragement. May not work depending on heredity and life stress. In some cases, hair tonic may not work at all. But God loves you just the way you are. Thanks, Dads. Let's continue in prayer. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will wait upon the Lord, we will 
folks, I wonder if you ever stop to marvel about how high and deep and wide and long is the grace of God, that we can't fall out of it when we know Jesus, when we love him, because he is the one who has done everything for us. We just need to stay with him, and he has paid it all, done it all, and we are safe and secure in his grace, this amazing grace. As we gather our attention back, we're going to have our prayers and then we'll have our Bible reading and our sermon. Lord God, we come with open hearts to express our concerns for the church and the world. We thank you that you not only listen to our prayers but will answer them according to your will. Merciful God, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus worldwide. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died and peace to those who are worried, fearful and anxious about what lies ahead. We also pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus and health services where workers may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. 
Here in Victoria, we especially pray for our current situation and the procedures that have been put in place to try to halt the spread of the virus. Help us all to be responsible in the things that we do in our daily lives to prevent further spread of the virus by taking heed of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which may work, make things worse. We continue to pray for those most affected during the prolonged lockdown restrictions, asking you, Lord, to look upon them with compassion, comfort, hope and healing. Give our Premier Daniel Andrews and his advisers the resources they need to provide essential services and the wisdom to plan the way ahead through uncertain times. Creator God, our world is broken and we need your help as we witness so much despair and suffering. We pray for all victims of evil and violence everywhere, for all governments where there is corruption and fear. We pray for a change of heart for those who cause so much pain to others, that they may see a better way of living and the conviction and courage to make the necessary changes. We pray too for those countries where there are additional catastrophes, for the United States in the midst of hurricanes, fires and racial unrest. Lord, bring help to that nation. Raise up leaders who will instill a sense of calm, provide wise counsel and restore peace. We pray for diplomatic ways that China and Australia can engage in talks to address their differences. We remember the people of Beirut in their distress after the huge destruction of a major part of their city. Loving God, we give you thanks for our family at Holy Trinity, for each member of the various congregations, for their well-being, for the ways we have found to come together while isolated from each other. We give thanks for the parish groups still operating and keeping in touch, albeit differently. We acknowledge with gratitude the hard work and creativity of those involved in bringing us the weekly services and information at home. Bless Trev, Karen, Bertram and their families as they maintain ways to keep us connected with them and with each other. This week we pray too for the work of the Finance and Investments Committee of the Diocese, the Ministry of Bush Church Aid in rural and remote Australia and overseas for the church in Pakistan as the Christians there preach the gospel with boldness despite the threat of persecution. Lord, we bring before you the vulnerable, the needy and the sick. Have compassion on them and help each one of us to play our part in reaching out to them. We are asked this week to remember the following in our prayers and there will be others known to us personally who need love, comfort and healing. Dorothy Sylvester, Matthew Wright, Val Casbold, Robin Bullen, Leslie Dangerfield, Judy and George Thomas, Shiri Sainan, Lynn Holt, Lorenzo Santa Lucia. Faithful God, deepen our love for you and for others, so that as we pray through this coming week, we may do so with your heart and your compassion. In Jesus' name we commit these prayers to you. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 to 21. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. 
And the second reading is from James chapter 5, verses 13 through to 18. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered up in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Well, you can see that I've got my Father's Day top from a few years ago on. I thought it was a fitting to wear that today, as I also think it's very fitting that we continue our series on being a Christian or opportunities for Christian in a COVID world uh, on Father's Day. This particular topic that we're going to talk about now, the topic of interceding for the world, uh, it's really good that it's on Father's Day. But before I talk about that more, first I want to touch back in what Karen talked about last week, uh, being lament. Lament is one of those things that is very fitting for us to do as Christians at, at all sorts of different times, but especially now. But I also want to make really clear, lament is not something we can just put pause on. So, oh well, we talked about lament last week. That should be over and done with. Well, that's not true, right? Lament is not something we can put on pause. You may be in the middle of a great lament and you don't come out of it just because this week we start talking about something else. No, sometimes we come in and out of lament. Sometimes we stay in it for a long time. And so if you are still in a space of lamenting for your circumstances or the circumstances of the world, um, please don't cut it short just because we talk about something else in this series. In the biblical story, though, uh, we see the people eventually moving through lament to something else. And there's wailing, there's crying, there's calling out in the biblical stories. But time and again, the theme that emerges is the faithfulness of God and the goodness of of God and his purpose in wanting to restore and remake the world. And so lament, even for someone like Job who suffered so much, it was actually in the end reframed with hope because the infinitely wise God, who is ours, it's him who holds all sorts of mysteries, not only the mysteries of suffering and pain, but he also holds the key to the remaking of the world. So we're able to leave all sorts of things at God's feet in our Christian worldview because he knows more than us. And so as we move off lament, we move to God. We move to him who has promised to restore the world. And we, as God's people, look to him as we work with him for this new day of restoration. Now, one of the ways we work for this new way is by praying. And specifically in our series, we're thinking about how we can intercede on behalf of the world. Now, to intercede is essentially someone going on behalf of another to someone else to speak on their behalf. Or as the dictionary puts it, to intervene on behalf of another Normally, the person who does the intervening has some sort of special access so that they can speak in a special way on behalf of this person to someone else. Well, years ago, I had a friend and he was a refugee coming from another country and a refugee in Australia. He came by boat, a marvellous Christian young man, and our government wanted to ship him back to where he came from. But this would have been dangerous for our friend. 
and he was powerless to influence any decisions that were made. He put his application into the government and it was getting nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. He couldn't do anything about it, but my church could do something about it. And we prayed for this person and that their visa would come. But not only did we pray, uh, intervening uh, and interceding with God about it, but we also decided that each of us would write a letter to the Member of Parliament who was in charge of giving visas. And so most people in our church actually sent a handwritten letter interceding on behalf of the person that we knew. We expressed a desire, we wanted him to stay in our community. And thankfully, this was granted and a visa was given. So we were able to do something that uh, this person was not, because we were citizens, we had more sway and we could do something about it. And yet, if we wanted even more uh, sway, could you imagine, actually, if the child of this government officer came to their dad and said, hey dad, I've heard about this person. They really should get a visa, shouldn't they? Haven't you heard their story? Well, this child who would have access to the father would probably have more influences than if we sent 5,000 letters. It's generally true that a person with closer relationship, whether it's an influence of power or just of close relationship to someone who could make a decision, it's more likely that more sway will be held. And this is where the church undeniably has a place where it can do something that the world or the, those people who aren't Christians, we can do something for them that they can't do on behalf of themselves. We can intercede to God on behalf of others. Remember I said today was a fitting day to be talking about this topic, about interceding for others in prayer, because Jesus revealed to us the appropriate way for us as Christians to be praying. Our Father who art in heaven. This term, our Father, it speaks of us having a special access to God, that we can pray knowing that God hears our prayers. Our prayers are heard and considered right before the throne of God. In the book of Ephesians that we heard earlier, in chapter 3, verse 12, we read that in him, that is Jesus, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This reality of being in him, in Jesus is so revolutionary for the church. Our access to God and our rightness with God is no longer based on who we are, but on whose we are. It's no longer based on what we've done or not done, but what on He's done for us. Through faith, or said in another way, through trust in what Jesus has done on the cross for us, winning our forgiveness and setting us right with God it changes our lives so we can approach God with freedom and confidence. And so as we approach God, not with head down with shame, but rather with boldness and confidence, we are in a wonderful position to plainly and clearly bring our requests to God. People who don't know God cannot do this. They cannot approach God boldly in this way. Though they may pray when they're desperate, they won't pray with confidence or boldness. In fact, most people won't pray because they don't feel worthy. They feel guilty. They feel like a prodigal child who doesn't deserve anything. Have you ever heard that expression, I can't go into a church or the roof may fall in on my head? Well, this mentality leaves people hiding from God, very much like Adam and Eve were in Genesis 3 when they rebelled against God. 
And when people are hiding with sin and rebellion weighing on their heart, they cannot and will not pray. Their relationship with God is not right, and so they don't pray, they don't ask, and they are left to battle on alone, trying to pull themselves up with their own shoelaces. But we in the church, who are just as sinful, and we were just as unworthy as those who insist the roof would fall in on them if they came to church, we know the ultimate beauty and gift of grace that God has given us. We thankfully have received forgiveness, grace and mercy from God through Jesus on the cross. And so we approach with confidence and freedom as we've already said. Now, if you're in a place where you don't feel that you can pray because you don't have freedom or confidence, well, I encourage you, get on your knees now and whatever it is that's holding you back from making things right with God, give it to him. Put it at the feet of Jesus on the cross and let him take this baggage and rubbish from you and walk then with freedom and confidence to God and pray. So friends, what do we do with this freedom and confidence? It's not just for ourselves. No, we can do for the world what they cannot or will not do for themselves. We can use our access with God to bring our world and our friends and our neighbours right before the Father, their needs, their troubles. We can lay at God's feet. He knows them already, but something happens in prayer. We tap into what God wants for the world and prayer changes things. Even though we don't know how, it does. That's why Jesus encourages his disciples to pray In this Ephesians passage, Paul shows us how he prays. Uh, In this passage, he prays for the church, but we can easily pray for our friends like Paul does for the church. And we can pray for our government and our world in a similar way. In verse 14, Paul is on his knees praying before the Father and knowing that God has the power. Paul is not making demands, but rather he is asking in humility Boldly, yes. Confidently, yes. But humbly, God, here, I bring my church before you. Help them. Give them good things. And in verse 16, we know that Paul knows that his answers come out of God's glorious riches and not from our work or sweat. It's from God's riches. We ask God to bless others. And Paul prays in a way that looks to the church to become more godly or to become more like him. And so he prays that Christ may dwell in the heart of the church, that the church would be rooted and established in love, that they would grasp how high and wide and long the love of God is, and that they would be filled to the full measure of God. So Paul's praying that good things would come God things would come to the church. And so this is how we pray as well for our friends and our world, that the things that God has promised, that his kingdom would come and that wholeness and healing would come to the world. And so where we see things not right, where we see things that are not good, we bring these things before God and say, God, would you help this? And so now we pray For people who are out of work, Lord, help them to fulfill their God-given right to use their hands for good. To work is a God-given thing. God, help people to find employment. Help them to use their skills and abilities to work well. Lord, help doctors and nurses to bring healing, which is again something that God desires. Lord, help governments to be just and fair. Help them to have wisdom. You see, we can ask God to do the things that are good. And so we pray, bringing our world to God. We can see things that are needed, and we can bring it to God. We want fullness and wholeness and maturity for the world. In the Lord's Prayer, 
Jesus encourages us pray, to pray that his kingdom would come and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, when we see our friends, when we see our world in despair or in pain or sickness or injustice, the best way we can pray is that God's good things would come. And with it will come justice. And with it will come freedom. And with it will become healing and wholeness. Now, these are bold prayers that we pray because we're praying really that what God has said about the future, that everything will be set right. We pray that those things would start to eventuate now. Now, as I come near the end of this talk, it's important that I do say, even though we pray with confidence and boldness in our intercession for others, in bringing them before God, we cannot be certain that the things we pray will come true. You see, we do pray with boldness and confidence, but God's the one who decides. And it's important to remember, just like one of my kids, if it comes to me and says, oh, Dad, can we do this? Now, just because my child has asked does not mean I'm going to say yes. In, in fact, sometimes I'm just going to say no and other times I'm going to say, yeah, when you're 16, you can do that. So we know as parents, uh, or even if you're a boss or in charge of anything, you know that there's sometimes you'll get the request from someone who has a lot of access to you, but there's something else at play and you might say yes or no or wait. And so as Christians, we bring these requests to God. We see things that are worrying us, we bring them to him, and then we leave them at his feet, knowing that he's wise, he's good, he's powerful, and his heart is to restore things. And so if we're praying that God will restore things, we know we're praying in the right direction, but we leave it at his feet to decide. I just want to finish by tapping back to one more verse in Ephesians, where it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. What a great verse, knowing that actually God can do more than we can even imagine. And I think that's a really important thing for us to hold on to, that God's goal is to restore and remake the whole world, and he will do that. And we can't even imagine how good that will be. And because he is the one who has the power to do this, it's so important for us to continue to boldly ask for things that God might do in the world and for our friends, and then to look to him and to leave it at his feet. He is the one who will restore, and so we commit our friends, our family, ourselves, to him in prayer. Intercede for your friends, brothers and sisters. We have access, so let's boldly go before the throne. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, as Jesus wept at the grave of his friend, we come to you grieving at the reality of the world's present suffering. In our great need and on behalf of our local and global communities, we cry to you for help and healing, for strength and wisdom. Help your church as your ambassadors to live boldly in word and deed, that our hope and love may bring life to the world. Give us humility to learn all you are trying to teach us, and may your careful pruning produce in us a harvest of righteousness. May we seize this opportunity for spiritual growth and leadership within our own households, even as we grieve not being able to meet together. O God, Father, Son and Spirit, although we will diligently work to overcome this pandemic, you are our greatest hope and we look to you to save and restore us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
finish our service with a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Great to have you join us. We'll see you next week. God be with you.